Radhe Radhe, today we are reading from Vilapa Kusumanjali, from Raghunathas Koswami, verse 15. Yada Tava Sarovaram Sarasa Bringa Sangola Sat Saroruha Kulojvalam Madhura Vari Sampuritam Sputat Sarhas Chakshi He Nayana Yugma Shakshat Vabhau Padaiva Mama Lalaschani Tavaiva Dasyerase Translation O blooming lotus-eyed girl, Radhe, when my eyes directly saw your pond, Radhakund, which is filled with sweet water and lotus flowers surrounded by blissfully humming bees, then I really got the desire to taste the nectar of your service. O blooming, lotus-eyed girl, Radhe, when my eyes directly saw your pond, Radhakund, which is filled with sweet water and lotus flowers surrounded by blissfully humming bees. Then I really got the desire to taste the nectar of your service. Explanations In the previous verse, Sri Raghunathas prayed to Srimati that he may once see her lotus feet anointed with luck die and in this verse he prays for the actual service of these anointed lotus feet having become greedy for that service that is what we shall become greedy for the service to the lotus feet of Srimati Radhika that can only be done in our Svarupavesh, in our eternal spiritual body. So therefore, it is very important that we are cultivating our spiritual body so that we also can become a chance to perform direct service to Srimati Radhika's lotus feet. But first we have to become greedy for that. Means first we have to develop the desire to do so. And for doing so, we have to become free from the material conception of life. Hört ihr die deutsche Übersetzung? Ah. 
Rat hey. Ich höre nämlich dich nur neben mir ja. sitzen, weil ich so Can you hear me? Radhe 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 She opens the love Hello Radhe Radhe Gurudev Not working Radhe Radhe Vandana du bist hier gut zu verstehen und zu hören wenn du Radhe Radhe Danke So these are the prayers of Raghunathas Goswami in his Swarupa Vesh, that he shows us what kind of greed that we should have and how to pray for the service. O Lotus Eid Radhe, ever since I got to see your lake. I developed a liking for your devotional service. Sri Radha Kund is the limitlessly beautiful crown jewel of Raja. Priyaji's Sarasi which is most dear to those whose everything is the service of Sri Radhika's lotus feet. Kundera Madhuri Heino Radhara Madhurima Kundera Mahima Yeno Radhara Mahima Seikunde Ekabara Ye Koresnana Tare Radha Sama Prema Krishna Koredana. This is a verse from the Chitanya Charitamrita. The Kunda is as sweet as Radha's sweetness, and the Kunda is as great as Radha's greatness. Sri Krishna will bestow a love equal to that of Radha's to anyone who bet who betes even once in this kunda. Gurudev, that means that Radha Kund and Radharani are not different from each other. Good if I have one question. This is a, a fact that there is no difference between 
Radha Kund and Srimati Radhika. So anyone who can go to Radha Kund and have the darshan of Sri Radha Kund, it is like the same of having direct darshan to Radharani. So I will question Gurudev later about that to go more in details. He can explain it much more better than me. So Sri Krishna will bestow a love equal to that of Radhas to anyone who bathes even once in this kunda. So this is a very auspicious if we can have the opportunity to go to Radha Kund and take bath once, then it is assured that we will get this love for Srimati Radharani and the service to her lotus feet. If it is that what we desire, so the desire has to be there and the goal has to be fixed. So Sri Guru is showing us the way how to reach the goal, but first we have to fix the goal and the goal has to be clear. So it has to be clear for us. That means we have to distinguish uh, between the different bhavas and what we want to cultivate, which bhav. In our case, it's clearly Manjari Bhav. That is what we want. Only the experienced devotees understand the complete feelings of possessiveness of the Radhanishta devotees. Means those who are completely loyal to Radha. Like Amanjari, she's completely loyal to Radha because she has no desire for anything else than to please Radha, that she can meet her Krishna. So here is to be understood that we are not the enjoyers. There is only one enjoyer, and that is Krishna, the Purusha, and we are supposed to be the enjoyed Prakriti. So first we have to come out of this concept of being the enjoyer. If we think that we are the doer, then we are in this Purusha Abhiman. And if we can become a viewer, then we are in our female energy. Like the Manjaris, by viewing the Leela, they are relishing it. And here, if we are reading this together and sharing, so we can also get the feeling for this. We can go very deep. And this world will be revealed to us so that we can become an idea, an idea what it looks like, how it feels what the feelings are. Spiritual life is all about feelings and is all happening on the inside. Externally, it may not be seen. It may be, uh, it seems that devotees are performing like normal worldly activities, but this doesn't matter anything because the real spiritual life is happening on the inside. Radha Nishta devotees means those who are completely loyal to Radha, who love Priyaji with their whole hearts and who have offered their hearts to her lotus feet towards Sri Radha Kund.
It is there that Sri Sri Radha Madhava eternally play their midday pastimes. And there is no place so dear to them as this. The Kunda is related to Swamini as being non different from her. So now here is the confirmation. It is related that this Kunda is not different from her. So what a beautiful opportunity for all those who even can take bath once in this Kunda. So along with the Kunda, those devotees who are surrendered to her see the Leela. This is a very important point. It is said here clearly, those devotees who are surrendered. So it is required that we can surrender to Shri Guru. This we can learn within being within the Sadakteha, that we can surrender means that if Gurudev gives us some advice, if we may like it or not, if we are surrendered, then it is that what we will do. Because he knows what is best for us. We cannot hide anything before Guru, because he can read each and every one of us. So it is better to have no secrets. A loving relationship is built on having no secrets from each other. It's a loving, very intimate relationship. If there is a lot of trust in each other. So surrendering is very important. The ego doesn't like to surrender because the ego wants to be, to, want to be the doer. So we have to change our mentality and our attitude and become a servant. And only if we are surrendered, then we can serve others. Like this bhakti path is only for non-envious people. If someone is envious, means that he cannot accept the greatness of someone else. So that means that this person cannot be humble means that this person cannot be surrendered. So this is a whole process that we are going through. And this Hare Krishna Mahamantra that we are chanting every day is helping us. It's very helpful to make the progress that is required to reach the ultimate goal. And being in the process means also nobody knows how long it will take. This is some individual thing. And actually, we should not expect any results. Sometimes results, if we are not attached to the result, the result is coming automatically. But as soon as we become attached to a to result, then maybe it seems that nothing happens until we understand the principle.
Shripad says, when I beheld the beauty of your lake, I developed a yearning for your service. The bank of Radakund is really wonderful. There are divine Kadamba, Champaka, Kunda, Sharisha, Ketaki, and King Shuka trees, as well as beautiful Lavanga, Clove, Jati, Yuti, and Madavi vines. There are many different fragrant flowers and Shuka and Sharika parrots are sitting on the branches of the trees, singing sweet songs, Rasagana, about Radhika and Madhava. Cuckoos sing in the fifth note, and bees are humming. So many birds are chirping, and the peacocks spread their tail feathers out as they sweetly dance and cry out, Keke, Keka. The great branches of the trees that beautifully, sorry, the great branches of the trees that beautify all the banks of the Kunda are studded with goose pimples of ecstasy, which they show in the form of their nuts, and they shed tears of ecstasy in the form of the honey that trickles from their flowers. The water that fills Radhakund and Shyamakund, sweet and filled with many colorful lotus flowers, is not actually water. It is the splendid, spiritual, erotic flavor of Rata and Madhava's pastimes. These things can only be seen with spiritual eyes that are anointed with the soul of love. Materialistic people cannot see it as it is. In Antarda's internal consciousness, we practice Lila Maya Bhakti, devotion that is filled with the transcendental pastimes. So this description here is from the point of view of Rati Manjari, Raghunathas Goswami in his Svarupavesh. And it is stated that only within a spiritual body we can see this, the real Vrindavan, where everything is so beautiful, fragrant, vivid, and the trees are so vivid and conscious. They have, even the branches of the trees have goose pimples. And from their ecstasy, honey is coming out from their flowers. So this is all beyond our, what we know in this material world is completely transcendental, spiritual and eternal.
And we can relish this only if we have an eternal spiritual body. That is, if a Sripad is stating this here, that materialistic people cannot see this. They have no access for this. So in the Radharasa Sudanidi this morning, uh, the other day we were reading a verse and in the commentary, three times it was mentioned that this flow of love is flowing to the practicing devotee. Three times it was mentioned, practicing devotee. That means that we have to practice to get there. If we are not endeavoring for this, then how we will reach the goal? If we are not getting the mercy of Guru and Sadhu, how we will get there? So very important is that we make ourselves available for that mercy who is always there. But because of our own blockages that we are creating by ourselves, we cannot be a receptive disciple, so to say. That is the work that it has to be done on our side and become very greedy for that. So we open ourselves up for the mercy that Gurudev wants to give us. But what he can do if we don't, if we are not ready for it, or if we are blocking ourselves to get it. So that is also an aspect of surrendering. If we cannot surrender, then how we will get the mercy Here Sripad is very mer mercifully describing, giving us a picture of what it is like in the spiritual world. And he is also stating who will get there and who will not get there. So... Someone else want to share something, please? Radhe, 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 Radhe. You hear me? Yeah, yeah, we hear you. Yeah, thank you very much for these nice sharings and explanations. I just want, you inspire me, I just want to Continue in this mood which you presented to us, actually, that we are depending on only on mercy. And this mercy is starting actually from Vaishnavas. And this mercy continues with Vaishnavas. And ultimately, this mercy is bringing Sadaka to the end of his goal. So it's very nice that Raghunath here <clears throat> is giving us opportunity that we can bath also in Radhakunda through his words. Mm. And through his words, we can feel his emotions. And his emotions are not different from the Dharani's emotions. And automatically it means that his emotions are not different from Radhakant. And it's very nice to remember that Raghunath, first, he received the mercy of Rupa Manjari, of Rupa Goswami. 
who enlightened his heart to see Vrindavan. So by the mercy of Guru Manjari, Shisha can see the Vrindavan. And in that moment, when he see, when he has a vision of Vrindavan, real transcendent Vrindavan, eagerness to make a direct service to beloved Shimati Radhika spontaneously appears in the heart. And now when he saw Vrindavan, he said, in the words, when my eyes directly saw your Radha Kund, not only that I saw all transcendental Vrindavan, I saw Radha Kund, this specific place for exchange of Maduraras. And when I saw directly, like you explained and Baba explained, with my spiritual eyes, not materialistic eyes. With materialistic eyes, you explain very nicely, we cannot see anything. With materialistic heart, we cannot feel anything. But we need spiritual feelings, spiritual eyes. And Raghunath is saying here, when my eyes directly saw your pond, first I saw your Radhakund. Then, I really got the desire to taste the nectar of your service. So it shows that process is going step by step and depends exclusively on the mercy. And Raghunath here by the mercy of Rupa, he saw Vrindavan with his transcendental eyes, but we can say he saw his spiritual body. Then, by the mercy of Vrindavan, he saw Radhakund as it is. By the mercy of Radhakund, he received full mercy of Radharani. And this full mercy blooms in the heart of Tulsi Manjari, Rati or Rati Manjari. And how it blooms in the form of eagerness, great strong, intense eagerness for the service of Radhika. So these words actually is showing us the gradual process of receiving the mercy and ultimate results of each of these steps so we require spiritual senses we require spiritual eyes and like you said Radhavalava we require it we have to be eager for spiritual identity. And all these commentaries, not only these words, are meant to inspire sadhakas, to get strong desire for relationship with Radharani and her Mohan, and also strong desire to develop their Swarup, ultimately Swarup Siddhi. Because only through Swarup Siddhi, when it manifests in the pure heart, in the pure mind, devotee can see Radha Kunt, 
has real strong loba, not only desire, but loba, greed for service. Yeah, thank you. Very nice explanation. Yes, I think also this whole Vilapa Kusumanjali is meant to increase this greed within us to keep on going with our bhajan and not to give up is showing us uh, all this nectar who we really can relish, who gives us a taste. So, like, this is not, are not some invented stories or a fantasy. This is the spiritual reality. These are description of what really is happening in the spiritual world. And it's something very intimate. And as a practicing devotee, we all can feel this and relish this and increase our greed to get more. Now one verse is coming. The syllables Ra, Sa stand for the sweet, splendid love of the divine couple Radha and Krishna. And when these syllables are reversed, we get the word Sara or lake. This secret makes the devotees very happy. Therefore, the devotees reveal that Sara lake by bathing in that rasa and by Krishna's grace they become blessed by attaining a love for Krishna that is equal to that of Sri Radha's. When Krishna becomes eager to see Radha and all his endeavors fail, he takes shelter of Radhakund. At that moment, he gets the audience of Radha on the strength of the Kunda. In the same way, Radha also takes shelter of Shyama Kunda and thus attains the company of Sri Krishna. Gurudev is the meaning of this, that if we are bathing in Radhakund, we will get the association of Sri Radha, Okay. 
Okay. I'm sleeping, maybe, yeah. Yeah, this is um, some complexity here in Yeah, yeah. Could be sleeping. Okay. Yeah, this is uh, some complexity in it, so we have to approach Gurudev for this shortly. Continue. Amazing lotus flowers, lilies, and Kalara flowers are covering the sweet water of the Kunda, surrounded by buzzing bees that become intoxicated by their fragrance. Rade, Rade. Rade, Rade. Dandavat. Dandavat. Um, <clears throat> if I may, I can jump in. I'm not wanting to take the place now from Gurdjieff, but if Gurdjieff is sleeping, I read several times what Baba is saying to this question. Um, because we all bathed. We all have bath in Radha Kunda. So Baba is saying, it's not that you get, it, it depends on many things. Uh, if you take bath in Radha Kunda, and if you are free from all offenses, and if you are free from all this bad word, sin, I don't want to use that word. So if you are completely free, you know, that there, there might be a boy coming to Radakund and he may fall into Radakund and he immediately will experience prema. So we never know what samskaras a soul has. But then the question is coming up, man, I have now been bathing 50 times in Radakund. Why am I not getting this prema? Very easy. Baba is saying, by continuously bathing in Radha Kunda, all apparats will go away and the desire to reside at Radha Kunda will still increase and increase and increase. And then at one point, like Raghunath, you know, when you are there, the Radha Kunda Vasis, they bath there every day. So at one point, when the consciousness is so high, it may just be that you are full of prema. So there is no contradiction when there is written that when you bath in Radha Kund, you will get the prema, you will get it. It just is a question of time and consciousness. So this is very important. Sorry that I, 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 I still have problems with my left ear. I cannot talk so long and, and, and listen. So I had the ear infection stuff. So I was just listening from the back. But I, I just wanted to say this because this is very important because I read it so many times and the question was, was coming up many times. How can the scriptures say that you bath one time and you get prema? It, they don't say one time. They say by bathing. And um, it's, it, it can happen to, to someone who is a real... You never know. The Vishwana Chakravadipat in uh, Raghavat Machandrika, he says that we can never assume a person and his samskaras. So we don't know what this person has done in the previous life. And now he goes there and he is bathing and he, he will have tears in his eyes. And I go there and I don't, <laughs> I don't feel anything. So this is all dependent on the Adhikar and on the circumstances. Jai Ho. Jai Radhi. Jai Ho. Thank you very much. May, may I add something? So, Devi, um, could it also be that this bar thing in Radakund is a metaphor? That it means uh, with our heart diving in this mood, it's like liquid. Metaphor is metaphor is not the right word because metaphor means 
you know, metaphor means it is something which is so for something else. But you are absolutely correct that the to to bath in the emotions, like we said, that the the lake of Swami of Radhakunda is the tears of love of Swamini. So when we when we go into this emotionally with our inner life, with our inner consciousness, and we assimilate ourselves with that, it is the same. Like you can sit now in your home now, Sudevi, and you can imagine yourself. You go. This is there is no difference when you do this in the mind. You can now go close your eyes and you and you go the steps down and you go into Radhakund and you come up and you go down and you come up and you do this three times. You have bath in Radhakund. Of course, it's better when you are there directly in the water, but there is no emotional and spiritual difference when you do it in the mind. We have heard this many times when when people burn burn their fingers in meditation and all that stuff. So best is of course to be in the holy dharma. But I I completely agree what you said. It is it is an example metaphor. I'm not hundred percent sure with the metaphor word, but this is like you know go into this feeling that the, the lake is an emotional reservoir. Of Radhika's Madanakya Mahabhav, and so you assimilate with this. So that's that's perfect. So we yeah, are coming to the is. point of sorry. So we are coming to the point again of following. So if we follow the emotions of Raghunath and our Rupanuga Acharyas, then we can bath in every syllable of their words. Because in their heart, Radha Kunda is always flowing. And if we receive the drop from their feelings, it means that drops of Radha Kunda will appear in our heart and pervade our heart. And in that moment, Sadaka will be connected with the most intimate maidservants of Radharani, will be connected with Radha Kunt, liquid prema, or tears, like said, and automatically it will be connected with Radharani and Mohan. <clears throat> because Radha Vallabha, <clears throat> sorry, my voice is, <clears throat> uh, he, he read, actually, that even Krishna gets the strength from Radha Kunda. And when he feels separation from Radha, Radharani, he is running to Radha Kund. Because when he is in separation, he is completely weak in one sense. But when he comes and baths in Radha Kunda, he feels Radharani's kisses embraces all limbs of her body, all her Mahabhava, Madanakya Mahabhava emotions. And we sadhakas, by listening these descriptions in Croatia, in America, in Germany, we also can but in Radha Kunda in this moment, but it depends on our consciousness, like Tarunji said. Depends on consciousness. If someone is really absorbed now in this moment, in one o'clock here in Western, <laughs> in this moment, if we are completely absorbed in the words of Baba and Raghunath, it means that we are bathing our heart. <coughs> and this is very encouraging. And this is our hope, because we don't have, everyone doesn't have possibilities, enough fortune. But even, like Tarunji said, even if I have been in Radha Kunda, even if I lived in Radha Kunda or Vrindavan, I still didn't feel that I really, really bought in Radha Kunda. So something is missing. What is but, missing? Kripa, full Kripa, which will I will be able to receive 
It's not the problem of those persons who are giving. The problem is in me, receiver. Also, you have to see that, you know, if we are very honest, it's not very easy to be completely without any offense. So you can you can check yourself. I can check myself every day how many offenses I do. It's not only an offense if you do something against the Vaishnava. Just uh, observe how you behave in your daily activities. So when I observe myself, how can I expect to be immediately full of prema when I bath in Radakund and then I drive with my car and I become angry because someone is is behaving. You know, you know what I mean. So uh, completely without any offense, completely free from from bad behavior. Who is casting the first stone? Certainly not me. So this is this means that you know you said like. Um, we don't feel anything, but that is uh, that is correct in one point. But also remember, we may not feel the effect now. But the more we do bath in Radhakund, the more samskaras are going in our hearts. So therefore, it's never in vain. It is never something which 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 will not be there. But we may not know and not feel. And at one day when we go there it may be even stronger. I wholeheartedly recommend to every one of you, uh, read Raghunath Das's Goswami's uh, prayers called Radha Kundastakam. I think it's either in Stavavali 3 or in Stavavali 4. So Stavavali 3, I sent already to the Radha Dasam group. If it's in Stavavali 4, I will send it in uh, in Radha Dasyam also, um, Raghunath is uh, eight eight really really wonderful verses um, praising Radha Kund. Because why do I say I highly recommend it? Because I cannot see Swamini, but I can see Radha Kund. You all can see Radha Kund, and there is no difference between Swamini and her lake. So it's very glorious if you read about Radha Kund and you imagine. The things Baba is saying there. Eight very beautiful verses, and you can go deep into meditation. Um, I check if, if in which Stavavali that it is, and I can send it there, and it will be a pleasure for you to read these eight verses. I'm 100% sure. Just want to say something that first seeing is coming. First seeing is coming through the ears. It sounds contradictory, but it comes through the ears. If we can relish through our ears what is written from our Rasik devotees, Acharyas, not ordinary devotees, Acharyas, then by their mercy we can have some glimpses it's not mystic in one sense, but it's, it's a kripa in another sense. In the same way, we can be in the association, close association with Raghunath, next to him, if we listen his words. Because yes. through the ears, we can feel him. And he is not ordinary person. He is transcendental person. Like Guru is not ordinary person. He feels what his dis disciple is feeling. So through the ears, proper listening, really proper from the heart, from the soul listening, We can see and bath in Radha Kund, not in the mystical way, but through the love. And we need Shraddha for that. If you like, I can read this paragraph, what is uh, pertaining to the question of Pranavalaba. Should I, should I do this? Yes, please. 
Um, so this is the, I send it already now into Radha Dasyam. It is uh, the second verse of Radha Kundastakam, um, which is, uh, the verse goes like, that very fragrant, dear and beautiful Radha Kunda, which instantly makes a desire tree of Brema sprout in the heartland of anyone who bathes there. Although this is very difficult to attain, even for Krishna's beloved in Prajabhumi. This Radha Kunda is my shelter. He always ends with this wonderful, wonderful Tadadi Surabi Radha Kundam Eva Shrayome. This is very wonderful to repeat every morning when you sit down. Tadadi Surabi Radha Kundam Eva Shrayome. This Radha Kund be my only shelter. Then Baba is saying, one may ask here, <coughs> how can that supreme goal? which is only attained after a long time of devotional service, slower, <laughs> of devotional service, be suddenly attained just by bathing in Radhakund. The answer is as such. Radhakunda's glories are said to be equal to Radhika's glories. That love, which is normally only attained after a long time of practice, Satya Vastu Sadhana Veena Kehu Nai Pai Chaitanya Charitamrita, is attained simply by seeing Radhika, even without performing any sadhana. This is the special feature of Radharani, which even Swayam Bhagavan Sri Prachendranandan does not have. Srimad Sanatan Goswami, now he goes in this question. Srimad Sanatan Goswami has written in his Brihad Bhagavatam Rita, Sa Radhika Bhagavati Kvachit Ikshyate Chet Premathat Anubhavam Richati Murti Mamsaha. Anyone who somehow sees the Supreme Goddess Radhika, will experience prema in his real form. Therefore, it is no wonder that a single bath in Radha Kunda causes, very important verb, causes the tree of prema to sprout in the field of one's heart. Very important. According to your Adhikar, some fruits may already be available. <laughs> So one may ask, but I see thousands of men and women taking bath in Radhakund every day and year. Why don't I see at last one of them getting prema at once? How can I establish my faith in these statements of the great self-realized soul? So Baba is now posing the question of our dear Pranavalava. And then Baba is answering. To this answer, to this, the answer of the Mahachans will be, whenever the scriptures and the saints proclaim such miraculous and inconceivable results, it must be understood to refer to offenseless practitioners. That is the most important sentence. Only an offenseless soul who baths in Radhakund will attain love of God. Otherwise, this would actually be visible on anyone who baths there. So now comes the point Baba is now saying, he answered already that question before. A single bath in Radhakunda causes the tree of Prema to sprout. That is all we have to know. The more we bath there, the more we are watering this plant of Raganuga uh, Lopa. So this is the all you can say. Such offenseless persons are very rare. And the fruits of such a benediction are not visible to our eyes so soon. Again, Baba is really saying, Deep, deep words so soon we don't know we don't know how and when 
um, there is no reason to doubt these glorifications. And now comes the paragraph which is especially meant for us. But for me, sorry, not for you, for me. But even an offensive person who baths in Radakund can get rid of his behavior and attitude and can also attain this supreme goal by patiently and repeatedly bathing in Radakund again and again. That's it. Bravo. This is the realized conclusion of the scriptures and the great saints. Someone may also think the whole of Brachamandal has the power to give love of God to its pilgrims, for the Padma Purana states, Dinamekam Nivasena Harau Bhakti Prachayati, simply by staying in the Mathura district for one day, one can attain devotion to Lord Hari. What is then so special about bathing in Radhakund? We all know the answer. The answer to this is love for Krishna is greater than love for any other form of God because Krishna is the original personality of Godhead. The pure and intimate love of the Ragatmika Brachabasis is far greater than the reverential devotion of the inhabitants of Dwaraka and Madura. On top of that, as the text says, the Prema Kalpa Druma, the desire tree of love attained by bathing in Radhakunda, is not, is, is, is not only unattainable by Aishwarya devotees or by those who worship Krishna in the mood of other servant, friend, or parent, but it is even hard to attain by Krishna's own Madhura Bhavamai girlfriends. So that means it's only attainable if you are in Manjari Bhav. It is well known that the amorous mellow is superior to fraternal and servitude mellow. And then Baba goes to explain these things. But I think our question has, has been perfectly answered by Baba in this paragraph. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very nice explanation. So what I can feel here is that this is a, a gradual a process who takes some time and it depends on each and every one of us individually. So if we are patiently executing our bhajan and continuing and remaining within the process, then the realizations will come step by step. And for me, it is very, for all of us, it would be very auspicious and very important that we all come to Vrindavan as much as we can and get the mercy and be close to Gurudev and have the direct association with the Dham, with Gurudev, with the Vaishnavas, so that we can install this Vraja Bhumi within our heart. And by continuing remaining within the process, we take this Raja Bhumi, this Vrindavan, we keep this in our heart, and wherever we may go, Vrindavan always will be with us. As you said, Mana Seva, service performed within the mind, is the same powerful as we to the seva, it is done by itself. There is no difference. If we are meditating, for example, I have a giriraj and I don't have, sometimes it is not possible to cook so much preparations and to offer because of my work. But then I meditate that I'm cooking many different preparations, delicious 
things and offer this to my Giriraj within the mind, with love and devotion. So this is all about loving, devotional service. And as you said, Tarun, I think our behavior towards anyone will change if we are ready to change too, to see, to not only see the different bodies that are walking around, to see that in that body, there is a soul and to appreciate that and not to see the coverings and uh, the bad things, to see the soul who is always pure. So everything is a, is a process and it takes some time. Should I continue reading a little bit? The Kunda is related to Sri Radha in all respects. And while Raghunath describes the way he sees the Kunda, he simultaneously describes the self-manifest pastimes that take place there. At noontime, Srila Raghunath Das Goswami anxiously cries out of grief, sitting on the bank of Radhakund, as he suddenly perceives one very sweet pastime. He sees Radha and Krishna playing in the water. The loser of this water splashing game must give a prize to the winner. Kundalata is the referee and the prize is nectar from the lips, means kisses of the loser. Radhika first splashes Krishna. How beautiful her eyes are. How soft, how sweetly her jeweled bangles jingles around her lotus whirl like hands. It is as if Cupid wants to defeat Krishna with his water missile. It's become intolerable, intolerable for Krishna. His garland of divine forest flower loosens his big pearl necklace falls off and his stick falls out of his hand. Only his powerful Kaustuba gem is able to tolerate this stream of water without lamenting. Ishwari thinks tender Shyamasundra will suffer too much if she splashes in his eyes. So she doesn't do that, but cruel Shyama, desiring victory, does splash Shukumaris in the Radhika's eyes, all too hard, saying, Priye, see if you can tolerate this. <coughs> So Krishna seeks for victory 
because he is the enjoyer and he want to enjoy her kisses he want to he want to get the prize so in this lila he is not caring about the tender eyes of radika and this splashing too hard because he want to be victorious but radika in her very sweet loving tenderness she could have done that too but she cares so much about her shyama that she doesn't splash to his eyes Tulasi watches on the bank of the Kunda how Radha and Shyama have a huge fight in the water. The Sakis rebuke Shyama, saying, Shyama, don't splash our Saki like that. Has she ever done that with you? Just see how much she suffers. But Shyama does not listen. Swamini becomes mad from his splashing, although she is normally so grave, and she backs away. What can a Sukumari, tender girl, do against such a powerful wrestler? Sri Lila Sukha Bilvamangala Thakur calls Krishna. Ananda, ecstasy. And on the mouth of that Ananda, a Sringararas, erotic flavor, smile blooms up. He does not play any other games than the games of Sringararas. Rasamaya Krishna and Rasamaya Radha shower each other with nothing else but rasa during their rasa krida delectable games and the devotees that are fixed in smarana are constantly showered with the sweet relish of this rasa krida So only the devotees who are fixed in their smarana, in their smarana, they will relish this. Fixed in their smarana means that they are fixed in their svarupavesh. And as manjaris, being part of the lila, by viewing this lila, they can relish it. This is only relishable in our spiritual form. With our material eyes, we will never see this. This is impossible. Because this is happening in the spiritual world. And to enter into the spiritual world, we need a spiritual body. To enter into the kunja, we need a manjari body. No one else is allowed in the kunja. As a female, uh, sorry, as a male, we are not allowed in the kun into the kunja. So that means that we have to become a female. And this is not only a question of a male body. We can have also a male consciousness if we are within a female material body. So this is very important to cultivate our female nature. Female nature means uh, to be caring and loving and completely in a service mood and giving unconditional love like the mother gives to the baby, unconditional love. She doesn't expect anything in return because the baby is her baby. It needs so much love that the baby can grow properly. So this is the kind of feeling that we should try to cultivate and really by heart go into that.
so that we ever will have the chance to have a spiritual body. Because the spiritual body is made out of love. There is nothing else remaining there. So as uh, Tarun was mentioning, like to become offenseless. Offenseless, becoming offenseless is including many things like offenselessly chanting the holy name is very much required so all these things can be revealed to us by the mercy of the holy name the holy name is very merciful and in kali yuga there is actually no other way to get there um may may i add and emphasize um yeah. This is uh, really female attributes and it isn't gender specific. I think it's, it's the longing and receiving to receive this mercy. I'm not the doer. Yeah. So this, and, and therefore I have to open my heart and everything. It's, it's this receiving. I think, I think it's really important. To yes, be aware of this. This is very important. Yes, that the the flow of love can be received if we are opening our heart to it. Then the flow can come, and the love can come in. But as we were discussing before, it is only because of our own blockages that this love cannot come because we are living in our ego and we are living in our mind. So all these leelas are meant also to cool down the heat of our mind. So cooling the mind means that we are cooling it with these transcendental pastimes to meditate in that and coming out of any material contamination, material contaminated meditation. So we have to, uh, uh, to guide the mind towards this, that the mind can become our friend. We don't want to be our mind, our enemy. Therefore, Uh, wonderful prayers, mana shiksha are there, prayers to the mind, where it is said a prayer like, my dear mind, my dear friend, my brother, please help me to perform my bhajan. So many lifetimes I helped you to do your thing, but now please help me to do what I want to do, to go deep. So we have to make our mind our friend. And Lila Smarana can happen. We can do Lila Smarana if we are filling up our mind with the proper impressions that we get here from the mercy of Sri Raghunath Goswami, who is telling us all about his most intimate experiences within his bhajan. Normally, no one will tell you all these details, all these personal things that you are experiencing in your bhajan. And this is the really causeless, precious mercy who is coming through this Vilapa Kusumanjali to us. So we should really have a deep appreciation of that and the deep appreciation for Gurudev who gives us access to this world. So therefore, it is very important that we hear directly from a self-realized soul. So that we can get the mercy and be a part of this wonderful world. Jai Sri Radhe.
If someone want to share something, please. I will not read any further. Uh, the purport here is very long. And I think if we can keep this in our meditation for today, it would be a very nice thing to do. I have a request one, please. Would you be so kind just to finish this paragraph? Because it's complete conclusion. And uh, then if you want okay. to do it, just a few sentences. Okay. Because it's complete conclusion. What you were talking, Baba were talking, and okay. I hope that it will be more clear. No problem. Now it comes a verse from Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Tat tat bhavadi madhurye shrute dhir yat apakshate natra shastram na yuktim chatal labhopati lakshanam. The definition of birth, of transcendental greed, is that when one's heart, uh, when one hears about the sweetness of the moods and the pastimes of Krishna and his Vraja devotees, one becomes attracted up to the point that one is not sensitive to the instruction of the revealed scriptures anymore, nor to logical arguments. I read this again. The definition of the bird of transcendental greed is that when one hears about the sweetness of the moods, and pastimes of Krishna and his Vraja devotees, one becomes attracted up to the point that one is not sensitive to the instruction of the revealed scriptures anymore, nor to logical arguments. So that means when Bhav is coming, then everything else is not required anymore. And it can be also an obstacle. So that means that we have to forget about logical arguments and the instructions that are given in the real scriptures. At the beginning, it may be helpful to follow these things, but as we gradually make progress in our spiritual life and get taste, rasa, bhav, feelings of this, automatically we are not anymore interested in the other things, in vaidi things, vaidi bhakti, we don't want, we want ragatmika, raganuga bhakti, feelings. Experience will come automatically while hearing about these sweet moods. These topics will, will destroy bodily consciousness and will nourish the Siddha Swarup. So these topics will destroy bodily consciousness and will nourish the Siddha Svarup. This is our nourishment. And if we are nourishing our Siddha Svarup, then automatically our bodily consciousness will go away because we are no more interested in sense gratification, in living within the material senses. Because the nourishment is so nectarian that we will be drawn there.
one who becomes lusty after hearing these topics is unfortunate. Shri, this, here I have to say that these topics, this is very intimate thing, all the love play between Radha and Krishna in the Kunja is a very intimate thing, but it has nothing to do with the lusty desires that we experience here in this material world. There, this is transcendental lust. It's something completely else. It's a loving relationship, a loving pastime, who has nothing to do with the loving pastimes in the material world. That has to be distinguished here. Therefore, Baba Sripad is mentioning this point. One who becomes lusty after hearing these topics is unfortunate because he cannot understand what this is all about. Sri Sukamuni says the topics of Radha and Madhava's loving affairs will cure the heart's disease of lust and will bless the hearer with the highest possible devotion to the Lord, which is undoubtedly Nanjari Bhav. So here it is said that lust is the disease of the heart. We have to get cured from this disease. And how we can be cured by that disease is by hearing and chanting Lila Smaranam, taking shelter by the lotus feet of Gurudev, and fill our heart with love, with loving devotion. Then we will live in our, we will be able to live in our Manjari Svaru and our bodily consciousness will go away. But the important thing is that we have the desire for this. Thank you very much, Radhavalaba, for these explanations. Thank you very much. It's very important that whenever we listen about these amorous pastimes, we always have in our mind and heart that this is not ordinary amorous pastimes between girl and boy. or man or woman. Otherwise, the lust will even increase more. And this is most unfortunate person who is after listening this loving amorous pastimes develop his material greed, the material lust, even higher and to increase. So for that we need association of Rasik pure devotees whose hearts are completely free from these material conceptions and impurities. And we should read, listen their words and meditate on their words. Because their words are pure like their pure hearts. Mm -hmm. And this is transmission, which is going on when we are listening their pure kata, pure words. Then purity is coming from their heart to the heart of sadaka. And our endeavor in that moment is that we should remember 
at least as much as we can to listen from spiritual identity, not from this body. If I listen just from this body, it will not bring proper result. Okay? I'm still Thank on you. that, I'm not on that level, but my duty, like disciple, like someone who wants to attain that goal, is to always remember, don't listen from this body. Don't think from this mind and senses. Yes, Shula, yes, my dear. Srila Prabhupada gave a very nice formula. So we are not neglecting the body and its senses, but we are engaging the body and all the senses in loving devotional service so that everything can be spiritualized. We are using the mind and senses because we are this in this body, just like an instrument, like a tool yeah. in sadaka, in sadhana, to prepare our heart for acceptance of Siddha, Swaru, spiritual identity. So this is the duty of disciple, to surrender, like Radhavalava said before, before, in the beginning of the lecture, to surrender, but what to surrender? My material senses, my material ego, my material mind, and then it they will be purified. If I hold them for myself, then purification doesn't work so well. So this is very important. I ask him to, to read it and to finish. I think that he wants to finish today because it's okay, it's enough. That we should always make this firm distinction that this is not ordinary lust between woman and wife. This is completely pure without any whiff of purities. And this is why the Amiris pastimes of Radha and Moha are so sweet. If they have some impurities, they would never be so sweet. Sweetness is a result of complete selfless, mutual love between them. And this is prim. And it's only possible to exchange in spiritual transcendental bodies and also to serve their love in spiritual transcendental bodies. That's I wanted to emphasize. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I think it was good to conclude to read this uh, paragraph. Very helpful. Well, thank you for suggesting. <laughs>